I wasn't ready for this change, but my prognosis isn't good. You don't belong here. Don't worry, I'll be okay. Whatever's coming next, I don't want my family to see me like that. How do you like your new home? It's beautiful. Takes a bit of time, but you'll fit right in. Hi, uh, Axel, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? I'm fine, thanks, how are you doing? Uh, congratulations on the movie, yeah. I watched it yesterday, it's fantastic. I really, uh, really enjoyed it. Oh, awesome, thank you. So, um, I mean, the first question I want to ask you is, how long has it been gestating? Because, I mean, obviously residential homes has, has been ground zero, especially during COVID. No, I mean, that's, that's where COVID really hit hard. So, I mean, this, I mean, imagine this was something that dates back well before that, no? Oh yeah, so, we shot it before COVID. Shot it before COVID. So that must have been something that really kind of played in your mind when COVID came in, though, that how this film was going to play out, knowing that it had been ground zero kind of during, during COVID time, no? Mm -hmm. No, it was, it, was, it was very hard to see. And it was very kind of, in some ways, it evidenced a lot of things that the movie was trying to say, which is that we don't value people over a certain age the same way that we value younger people the way that we treat some people the way that you know nursing homes were in some places were just very much left in the pandemic to fend for themselves and and that people would say well the disease is not that bad because it's only killing older people as if that was just okay and their lives didn't mean as much and and as much as i understand what it's supposed to supposed to mean it's just a terrible, terrible way of, of, of looking at people. And, and um, we, we filmed it just before COVID, actually. We filmed it two years ago already, and we delayed the release because it felt like it was completely inappropriate to release oh. it last year. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, so but I, I, the, the Blumhouse, the last year's Blumhouse. It was going to be, yeah, oh, it was the second right. one that they shot. And right. uh, so, so it's been a long time. I haven't seen it in a bit, but uh, yeah, we finished it. We finished post and everything over a year ago. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm curious how much I don't want to get into your personal life or anything, but I, I wonder, I, I wonder what, what someone, I mean, you're about the same age as me. So what made you decide to write a film about these people kind of going through the motions of, of kind of realizing that they won't be here for much longer and they won't be able to see, especially their kind of their grandkids flourish. No? What, what sparked mm -hmm. that idea for you? Because you're still quite young for, to, to kind of go into something like that. Actually, it's something that's been in my head since I was little, like very, very little. I remember being, I must have been under eight because we were still in the house that I grew up in as a kid. And I remember staying awake at night thinking, I'm going to see my mom get old. And, and it just seemed like, I'm going to see my mom change. And because we, we do have a tendency to see older people as people that we don't communicate with as well or that are completely different. Um, it felt like my mom's going to turn into a stranger to me as a child. And so that's something that's always kind of been there. And then in more recent years, it's, I mean, the last 10 years or something, I think there's a point in your life where you start realizing, hang on, this is going to happen to me. Like, I'm not going to be here forever. And so all those fears play in your mind. And I think that especially as a woman, particularly your age is a, an element that defines you in the eyes of other people. People will look at you very differently if you say you're 25 or if you say you're 45. Yeah. And, and those are all things that whatever age you're at is going to play on, on your mind. And then on top of that, it was seeing my dad have dementia and move into a nursing home at a fairly young age. It started when he was 65 and, uh, and my granddad be moved into a nursing home and the way that when people treat you differently, it affects you and it makes you behave differently and becomes that other person in some ways. Like it very much like the moment you're moved into that environment, sometimes it changes people. And, and those are things that I just needed to process somehow. And I guess that came out through a script. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I imagine that, that that was the kind of the initial idea before the, I don't want to give too much away what happens towards the end, but obviously it goes into kind of more supernatural uh, themes. Yeah. That did that come later? And, and if so, how did you, how did it transmute from kind of these ideas that you had that you'd gone through with your family and kind of personal things? How did you, how did that kind of transform? No, it came up paranormal? right away. The supernatural was there from the start because that's what I'm into. Right. And that's just like everything I, I, I see. That's how I, you know, even being in a nursing home, I like being in that environment, you realize, oh, they're locked inside the house. So what if there's something scary inside? Like little ideas like that, that kind of make it feel like this is a great setting for that. And people don't believe you. And and then there's little things like my dad in the early stages of his dementia, he woke up at night and he woke up my mom and he looked around and he's like, you don't mind all those people watching us? And I thought, this is, this is horror. This is genuine yeah. kind of. Um, so those ideas were always there. And again, I feel like I didn't want to make a movie that's depressing. I didn't want to make a movie that's um, 
not appealing to younger people in a way like some I wanted something that everybody could watch and enjoy and just be take it for the mystery that it is and go along for the ride and then if those ideas stick with people afterwards and start a little bit of a debate or make them think about things then that would be something that would take place kind of incidentally as because I mostly want people to watch it and have fun you know I I, yeah. I don't want people to get the impression that this is a very dark and depressing movie no, no, so yeah. it was always kind of trying to figure out how to bring the more gothic aspects of it to to make uh-huh. it that slightly less real life scary kind of element uh-huh. I'm curious about the cast as well and um, was there any specific reason for the for especially the kind of the four main cast members that are in the residential home, was there any specific reason why you chose any of those? And did they bring anything specific to the table because they are actually kind of going through those motions, I imagine, when they came on board, they were like, wow, those are things that I'm actually going through right now. Or maybe they brought something that you hadn't thought They're of. actually all incredibly, like they behave like they're 35. Right. <laughs> all of them. Like Barbara behaves like a kid on many occasions and they adore her. Um, I was just thinking that I, I wish we could release all the the um, the bloopers of the movie because yeah. people would see how hilarious she is. Um, but yeah, she's. I mean, all of them have done amazing work in in the genre. And, um, Bruce Davison, obviously, Willard, and, and has done a lot of horror recently as well. Barbara is the star of the Entity, which has scarred anybody who saw it. Um, she was also in Black Swan and she was wonderful. She was in Insidious, you know, she, she's such a huge name in, in the yeah. genre. And then we have uh, Jill Larson, who was in Taking of Deborah Logan, Logan and plays something movies. very different. Yeah. Oh, I, I love it. And I love, I love her. It. I mean, she is, she's gorgeous. She's so expressive. She's so, she's so funny as well. Um, mm. And then Fran Bennett, who unfortunately I hear passed away yeah, she passed well, last week, I think. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry yeah, to hear that. Yeah. Very recently. And she was, I loved being able to cast her because she terrified me in Wes Craven's New Nightmare when, was, um, when that came out. So that was, uh, that was just awesome. And she's the warmest. She was the warmest person and the sweetest person. And, and also very funny and had a deep, loud laugh at things that you wouldn't expect from the terrifying doc- doctor from New Nightmare. So she was clearly very, very good at what she did. But it was fun because it was, they bonded and it felt a little bit like... When, when you see that scene early in the movie where Judith comes up at breakfast with her tray and she doesn't know where to sit and she's kind of looking around and like who should I sit with and then there's the cool kids and I felt like it was almost like school it's that kind of dynamic of do I sit with the popular kid do I sit with the nerves do I yeah I felt exactly that yeah and it felt like they bonded like college kids on set it was really it was really fun to watch Uh and then just to finish off obviously I mean I was I saw on Twitter recently you wrote something about um, enough already of the debate of of women <laughs> making more horror the the whole the whole uh, Blumhouse, these four Blumhouse films apart from one one male director it's all female directors all female stars this must be something that you're really excited about I mean this is kind of pushing that debate right out of the door no I think it's great I think anytime we have those opportunities it's wonderful I wish we had more opportunities to be honest we still don't see many women making studio movies and and god knows what because you know there used to be that perception that women don't want to make studio movies hell yes please give me a studio movie i would love to make studio horror would i make a conjuring sequel hell yes i would make a conjuring sequel it's it's there's still some doors that feel like they're close to us and and every step is wonderful and is necessary and i feel like visibility for female filmmakers is very important as well because one thing I noticed um, that I finally understood about myself is it took me a long time to see myself as a director. I always knew that I wanted to be in horror. I've always been writing, but it took me until I was in my late twenties to realize I want to be a director. And this is, yeah. but there were no women at the time who were visibly doing that. There were a few exceptions, and there were a few people I really admired. You know, I loved Pet Cemetery or I loved um, American Psycho, but there were so few and far between that it just felt like it's unconsciously if you don't see it it's hard to imagine yourself in that role mm-hmm. my dog is coming to now. say hi <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant well listen Axel thank you so much for your time I love the film to bits I, uh, I wish you the best of luck with it and hope to speak to you again sometime soon thank you so much it was so nice to speak All to right. you take care when you open them again whatever you saw or heard will be gone <laughs>